From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Today is a very, very special program. We'll be referring to the reason I'm saying that in just a moment. But I'm going to give you three very important headlines from around the world. First of all, are these really the last days? And then the dark side of Europe. Oh my, Europe used to be so wonderful to visit, and it's Jack's relatives all live in Belgium. We go there real often, but now a dark side to Europe. And finally, Israel, the source of all world evil. Can you imagine that they would say that about Israel, the land that God loves? We'll be referring to that in just a moment. Take a look, if you will, at this first headline. The Four Horsemen Mounting, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, are they about to ride? Whoa, and we'll talk about that. And then Prophetic Observer, are these really the last days? All right, and I love this. In love with the return of Jesus. I like that heart. Certainly my heart is there. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a joyous time. Philippians 2, 10 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, ha, <laughs> ha, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Oh, Jack, that's great. And then in 1948, the eyes of the world were focused on the Middle East because Israel was born. And then going on June 1967, uh, during the historic Six-Day War, God fought for Israel and restored the holy city of Jerusalem to the Jewish people. Can you believe that? In just six days, God gave Israel the victory. Now, this is really connected with the coming of the Lord because the Bible teaches that the Lord would not return until Israel had Jerusalem. Correct, Jack? Oh, right, Rick. So, the disciples came to Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 3, and says, Tell us, what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you, Israel, shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And I used to preach these signs, but I missed the sign. And it's verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branches yet tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all the signs, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, in connection with the fig tree blossoming, Israel becoming a nation, that's it. We are the generation. Why? In 70 AD, the Roman general Titus went down, took the Jews away. They were under control by empire after empire. They were not back home. They were not Israel for thousands of years until May 14th, 1948. Hallelujah. The fig tree is blossomed and the fig tree is Israel. And that's Joel 1, 7 and Hosea 9, 10. We're left to see it. And they have to be in control of Jerusalem because the war is when they're trying to go back and forth between the Palestinians and Jews to control Jerusalem. It's happening right now. ISIS is stationed at the Euphrates River. And Armageddon begins there over these very issues. Now, here's what's so important about Armageddon. 
If you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39 as the war of the latter years and latter days, just before Christ comes, because he comes to put a step to Armageddon. But if you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39 this week, you will find Israel mentioned 18 times as the battlefield. It could never have happened until now. Why? There was no Israel to invade until your day. And they could not fight over Jerusalem because they didn't possess Jerusalem. Now, both signs are here, and we're going home soon. Believe me. I love it, Jack. I love it. But, you know, I'm so sad to say that this next headline really burdens my heart. You know, hatred for Israel has raised its ugly head again. Take a look. Europe's 1930s. Jew hatred raised raised its ugly head again. Whoa. And then the dark side of Europe, the murderous assaults of Jews, of course, in uh, Toulouse and in Brussels, are a wake-up call for the European Jewry. Iran, we're ready for a decisive battle with Israel. And who else? The U.S. And then never again will we stand unready to defend ourselves. And of course, that is the intention of the Jewish people. America must stand with Israel. Thank you so much, Dr. Ben Carson. I appreciate that. Shout, oh Israel, God loves you. I love that verse. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31, 3. And evangelicals against Israel. What? Evangelicals? I'm going to ask Jack about that one. Absolutely. I did not realize that there were some, just some, evangelicals that are confused about Israel. And they call it replacement theology. Well, Jack, what is replacement theology? They say every time the word Israel appears, you make it the church. Now, that is the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. You just don't handle God's word that way. The Bible teaches that Israel is Israel and the church is the church and you don't confuse the two. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and you birds got it all mixed up. I wonder what version you're using right now. Better get a King James uh, version and you'll be on the right track. But Rexella, that's how the Jew is hated, even the evangelicals, and they are in trouble with God, believe me. God says, I love Israel. She is my chosen, Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. She is my elect, Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, 65, verses 9 and 22. She is my betrothed, my fiance, Hosea 2, 19, yea, and she is my wife, Jeremiah 3, 14. And God loves the Jew. He warned us when Jesus was here, he said, the hour will come when you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And that, of course, is Matthew 24, 9. And then he also said, the time will come that whosoever kills you will think he's doing God a service, mm. John 16, 2. Well, when evangelicals start talking that way, we are in trouble with Christianity. The apostate church has arrived. We are the Laodiceans. And God help us because in Revelation, we read concerning the Laodicean church, I know your works are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So that because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. God says, you make me want to vomit. Wow, that's oh. pretty strong. And yes. I'll tell you what's wrong with these churches. Uh, the, they're not preaching the word. Uh, they've become the first church of the deep priest, pastor Dr. Jack Frost, and we need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Israel is going to suffer. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob changed his name to Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. God, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you, Israel. Psalm 122, 6. All right, Jack, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Take a look at this next headline, if you will, please. Jerusalem and the Muslims. Well, you know, Jerusalem's precious to the Jews, and the Islamists have their eyes on it. Jihad in where? Jerusalem. And going on, Hamas, Israel, 
the source of all world evil? Are you kidding? Hamas is saying that. Well, Netanyahu is not the problem, according to Nolan Finley. Well, thank the Lord. He is speaking to the president there. And there seems to be a little bit of better relationship between our president and Netanyahu now. Palestinian witness ISIS played with a, huh, a severed head like a soccer ball. The oh, the feast. My, Hallelujah. oh, my, oh, my, oh, <laughs> my. Temple Mount Claret calls to restore caliphate and annihilate the Jews. One more. Iran sends arms of ruthless terror all over the world. Well, we only have time for a very, very quick question. But it's a very important one. You've heard of this, this word maybe all your life, Armageddon. Is everything we've been talking about today, the hatred of the Jews, leading to Armageddon, Jack? How about it? Oh, it's here, Rexella. Armageddon is Revelation 16, 16. Now, who is involved? These prophecies are 2,000 years old, and we are seeing them right now. First of all, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Russia makes the first move. Russia, yes. Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. Rosh there is Russia in English and Odyssea in the Greek. And then they have Meshach and Tubal, and that's Moscow and Tubal, southwest of Siberia. And that war is the one of the latter years and latter days, Ezekiel 38, uh, verses 8 and 16. No doubt about it. And America will be on the opposite side. And just now our president has sent in many of our planes to start going against the planes Russia has there in Syria. Syria is part of Armageddon, Isaiah 17.1. Wow. And Damascus becomes a heap of rubble. Can you imagine our president said, we're going to take a stand against the Russian planes. That could lead to World War III sooner than most of us think. Now there is more to it. China then comes to the aid of Russia, Revelation 16, 12. And we also see Tagarma in Ezekiel 38, 6, joining in with Syria and the Russians. And Tagarma is Turkey of today. We could go on and on. Egypt is included in Daniel 11, verse 40. Rexella, we're in tremendous situation as far as war is concerned. We're living in the final hours. War could break out at any time. So you believe now, the Armageddon is right around oh, the corner? yes, and it's depicted in Revelation 9, 14 to 18. Loose the four demons of the great river Euphrates. That's where ISIS is stationed right now. Why? To slay a third part of mankind. And the number of the army was 200,000, 1,000, 200 million. China has six times that many people, and they're going to help Russia. And finally, the Bible teaches us that it's going to be an atomic war. By these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone. Now, listen again. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47. Joel 2, verses 3 and 31, Sephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1. All atomic warfare, atomic weapons. We didn't have these things. There was no Israel till 48. It couldn't happen until there was. We've lived to see it, and they're in control of Jerusalem, and that's where World War III Armageddon begins because of Jerusalem. Thank the Lord, Jack. The Lord Jesus is coming back. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. He's going to stop Armageddon. But uh, before the Lord comes, I want to ask you, we aren't guaranteed tomorrow. Any of us could go out of this life at any time. Are you ready? If the Lord should come in the rapture today, would you be ready? Or if you're taken another way, are you ready? Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? Are you walking with him? Jack's going to pray a wonderful prayer in a moment, asking the Lord Jesus to come into the heart. Will you pray that prayer, Jack? Prepare to meet thy God, Amos 4, verse 12. Heavenly Father, I've heard your word today. I heard what's coming, and I'm not ready. 
And this thing could break out at any time upon the world. And Lord Jesus, I want to be in the rapture. I want to be part of that group that goes up in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture crowd. But there's only way you can do it. How? By receiving this Jesus right now. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. That's a promise from God. Do it right now. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Your precious blood was shed to cleanse me from every stain and taint of sin. I'm sorry for my sin, and I want to be cleaned up. Wash me, Jesus. Save me. Forgive me as your precious blood is applied to my own body and soul right now. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me. Thank you. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. Amen. Oh, how good it is to be ready for the rapture or for anything else life offers us. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. If you hadn't already prayed it and you hadn't received Christ as your Savior before now, but now you're ready for whatever the future holds. Let me know if you prayed that prayer. There's my address. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. How good it is to walk with the Lord in these days and know the arms of the Lord are guiding you. And now our offer of the week, and I'll tell you it's so important that you have it. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, Here's Rexella. Are you worried? Oh, we look around and we can be so worried. This is so good. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do and doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> How good it is to pray. Look forward to being at home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.